Welcome to the most awaited video of my page, the complete VLSI roadmap for 2026. It's not just limited to 2026. Even if you're watching to like three to four years later, you will really appreciate this video because it's applicable for beginners, working professionals, students, whoever who wants to learn VLSI. The thing about VLSI is that a lot of people will tell you, you have to learn from this, you have to learn from that. But what I believe is you have everything available on YouTube and you just don't know where it is present. And you need not worry because I have brought you the free resources from where you can learn VLSI and a complete roadmap. There are two major roles in VLSI, front end and back end. Wait, what? Sounds like software engineering, right? But yes, we have a very similar structure in VLSI. And understanding this distinction earlier before even you start can save you months of confusion. Before we dive into the nine steps that you need to follow for VLSI roadmap, let me address what's really happening in market at now. Every single day, students are asking me, how is the VLSI job market right now? Will there be openings for freshers in the next one or two years? Should we continue ECE, VLSI or shift to software? And here is the truth and positive sides that you need to understand. The industry looks massive. India is investing 76,000 crores in the semiconductor sector. Fabrication announcements, advanced packaging facilities are happening in India. And if you, if you take a look at the global geopolitical shifts, moving to ship manufacturing focuses, like, I mean, the focus is towards India. But there's also a negative side that is still existing. The hiring picture is confusing. Many companies aren't actively hiring freshers right now. Teams have paused on boarding and majority of the openings require two to four years of experience. And also there is a slight impact of automation and AI creating uncertainty. But what is the real reality? The reality is that students are still getting placed, internships are getting converted into full time and startups are hiring quietly. They are just selective but not completely closed. What is the key takeaway? Skill-based hiring is growing faster than degree-based hiring. Companies don't have six months to train you anymore. They need day one contributors, at least the basic ones with skills. And this is why you need a strategic step-by-step -step plan on how to approach your VLSI journey and let's build your VLSI foundation. Now, before we get into VLSI specific roadmap, let me take you to something very important. If you are coming from an electronics background, if you haven't watched my EC roadmap video yet, I highly recommend you to watch that first, right? I do understand some of you are into electronics, ENTC and other background. For you also, this will be helpful to you understand what are the basics that you need to learn in ECE first and then proceed into VLSI. It will give you a bigger picture of where VLSI fits in the broader electronics landscape. I will put the link in the description also, you can find it over here. But if you have already got your ECE basics cover and solid, you want to jump straight into this video, the complete VLSI foundation. And one more thing, so this is the exact complete roadmap that I'm going to give you, but I'll not give you the PDF of this roadmap. And that is the catch. A lot of you watch the video and forget it. So if I give you the roadmap also, you just save it and go away. But what I highly recommend you is take a pen and a paper, and watch the video till the end, make notes of it because that's what goes into your mind, not saving the PDF. So here is what we are going to do today. Master these nine fundamental steps and where to learn from and what are the basic concepts that you need to cover. So these are the nine steps that you need to follow the VLSI roadmap and you may wonder aptitude really bro you have to forget advanced tools for now forget CAD and synopsis training that comes later but let's first build the foundation for your VLSI and starting from foundation aptitude is the first thing that you need to start with and let me tell you the reason behind it you cannot cram this at the end I have seen too many talented students people who could design complex state missions get filtered out at aptitude rounds. Aptitude is a core skill that cannot be learned in one night. My recommendation is 30 minutes straight 
every day while you practice right use whichever platform that works for you it could be india bex prep insta whatever is working for you learn it in your preferred language i can suggest you some youtube channels but what i feel is learning aptitude in your preferred your mother tongue or whatever language is helpful for you is what work for you make it a daily habit from day one that takes me back to the second step that is mastering digital electronics digital electronics is non negotiable this is where 90% of the interview questions start from and these are the topics that you need to master that i have displayed over here whether you are at a startup or at intel your understanding of digital electronics determines everything what topics you need to master number system and boolean algebra combinational circuits multiplexer decoders encoders adders subtractors sequential circuits flip flops counters shift registers state machines memory elements you can write it down or take a screenshot of this and these are the study resources from where you can learn digital electronics for english use digital electronics from neso academy from hindi use digital electronics from gatewala this is where from i have learned this is not a sponsored video by them and the book that i used was morris mano i have a pdf that has most important digital questions that are asked repeatedly in the interviews for you that will be very helpful i have given all these links in the description do check it out most students get things wrong it's because they just watch videos and read that is passive learning you need to draw circuits by hand on paper because in interviews they hand you a white board marker and say design me a 4 bit synchronous counter or give me a 3 to 8 decoder if you can't draw it in 2 to 3 minutes that tells them everything about your preparation and once you have mastered digital electronics you need to move to the fun part which is the very log this is where everything you learned in digital electronics become real this is where you stop being theoretical and start being practical very log is a hardware description language and it's how you tell the silicon what it needs to do silicon yeah and let me tell you what is the industry expectation from you you need to be able to try look at a hardware diagram and write the very log equivalent code and not pseudo code actual synthesizable very log and you can take a screenshot of this where I tell you what you need to master. Over here you can see basic coding and syntax, module structure and ports, combinational versus sequential, blocking versus non-blocking, writing test benches to verify your designs, understanding what code is synthesizable. So you may ask me like till what level should I practice Verilog? If someone shows you a 4 to 1 mock circuit, you should write its Verilog code in 10 to 15 minutes. And that's the bar for the fresher. And the best book that I used was Verilog HDL by Samil Pannikkar. If you want to download this, I can't give you the link because but it's available on the internet. Just go and google it. You will be able to get the PDF of this book. And the YouTube video which I referred was by Professor Indranil Sengupta from IIT Kharagpur. so you you can find this playlist it contains hardware modeling using verilog it contains 42 videos and these are really taught by iit professor so you know the level of it his hardware modeling course on nptel is exceptional and there is the thing even if you are from a tier 3 college you can learn from an iit kanak professor for free that's about the best thing about youtube so you need to use it well so once you are done learning things you need to practice it how can you practice you need to create a lookup table which has two columns the left side contains the verilog construct always block case statements if else and things like that and the right side the hardware circuit what it represents in that way when you practice this versus this do this for 20 to 30 constructs the single exercise will make you 10 times better at interviews and it will be it will be in your mind registered one common mistake student use blocking assignments in sequential away blocks this works in simulation but can fail in synthesis learn the difference understand why it matters that separates engineers who just write codes from engineers who understand the hardware and this takes me to the step 4 once you have your digital and very log it's time to go one level deeper the transistor level every chip in your phone laptop everything runs on cmos transistors that's the basic building block of modern electronics now here is where the paths start to diverge for front end you need solid basic understanding basics of nmos pmos cmos and for back end you need to go in depth and in basics this is what you need to focus on nmos and pmos transistors how they are different and why we use both cmos inverter characteristics this is your base your foundation and the voltage transfer characteristics 
fantastic curve you can also learn noise margins switching delays and where can you learn these things from for understanding mosfet from a deeper perspective i would suggest to watch cmos digital plsi design by professor das gupta he is from iit roorkee you get a crazy understanding of how mosfets work from this you can watch this playlist by professor janaki raman digital ic design this is also a long playlist which contains 81 videos but you will get an excellent in depth understanding of the device physics and in every vlsi questions you can expect questions like draw a cmos inverter explain its operation what does the vtc curve look like and what determines the switching threshold voltage master this concepts and you look very confident in your interviews and understanding cmos is in just academic where you are debugging timing violation when you are optimizing power when you are dealing with signal integrity issues it comes back to the transistor level and this takes me to step 5 c programming logic and scripting now you may be thinking c programming in vlsi is this really bro yes you do have to learn c programming especially in a industry we use a lot of scripting we use tickle perl for passing logs and report python for regression testing and data analysis all of this become much easier if you understand the programming fundamentals and c is the foundation plus many companies still test basic coding ability in first rounds they want to know can you think algorithmically can you debug can you write clean and logical code so i have given what you need to learn the basics that you need to learn you can take a screenshot of it and from where you can learn you can use neso academy for c programming and then once you start learning parallel you should practice c because it's a programming language so you can practice on hacker rank or lead code where in hacker rank you'll have a complete a complete path where you'll be able to learn c and test it so that is where you can use once you learn it you can use a chat gpt cloud to understand the concepts faster but code yourself writing the programs debugging them feel the struggle that is where you learn and this takes me to the step 6 the computer architecture this gives you the broader perspective how do all these pieces fit together in an actual system this is important because in industry you are never designing in isolation your block is part of a bigger system understanding computer architecture help you make better design decisions in the key topics that you need to learn processor organization memory hierarchy pipelining and instruction sets the risk with cisc <laughs> this is the most common asked questions and the resources again neso academy's playlist where you have computer architecture and it's very comprehensive so you can learn it like in depth there has 100 videos i know it's a lot but you need to learn in back end interview you will get questions like explain the memory hierarchy why do we need l1 l2 l3 cache and what's the trade off because when you are designing a memory controller or optimizing a cache performance or understanding why certain access patterns are faster this knowledge becomes critical for you and and this takes me to the step 7 the sta what is sta static timing analysis this is where things get more serious and this is what separates people who just know the theory from people who can actually close design let me be very honest if you want a back end role and don't understand sta then they won't interview you if you want a front end role you still need solid basics because timing closure is everyone's problem these are the six fundamental terms you must know setup time hold time clock skew clock jitter clock uncertainty and slack and here is what happens in real projects you write rtl it works in simulation you then synthesize it then timing analysis shows negative then you are completely stuck if you don't understand the setup and hold violation you can't fix it understanding sta means you can identify critical paths know where to add pipeline stages understand why certain logic structures are faster than certain other structures communicate with back end teams so you can learn sta from synopsis guide it's completely free it's available on the internet i'll give the link in i'll give the link in the description and this takes me to the step 8 which is understanding the vlsi flow uh, so you need to understand the vlsi complete flow to get an overall picture of what happens in each stage like specification high level design low level design rtl coding functional verification logic synthesis physical design and sign off why uh, why is it important in interviews they might ask at at what stage do we need to check for timing violations 
and where does the power optimization happen and what's the difference between functional and timing simulation to answer all this you need to understand how the vlsi design flow works i'll make a detailed video on this if you want tip let me know in the comments i'll come up with the next one all right all all right all right so we have covered eight steps so far one more remaining but before we go to step nine which is kind of important if you have found the roadmap so far helpful for you if you're getting value from this content consider subscribing to my youtube channel as you can see i'm close to getting 7k subscribers as of december 29th when i'm recording this video let's push it to 10k subscribers and 90 percent of you who are watching the video are not subscribing it i can see it from the analytics so we are pushing for 10k subscribers if you want more content on vlsi backend ec electrical whatever you want to know let me know in the comment section i'll make one for you so subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss out all the important updates all right let's get into step nine and finish strong step nine is low power design what is low power design why do we need it so earlier if you see the chips were of 10 nanometers but now we are focusing on getting into 2 nanometer and even smaller low power design techniques are enabling this possible for us because power efficiency directly impacts the battery life, heat dissipation and chip reliability. So there are total three types of power consumption. One is dynamic power, the other one is static power, the third one is short circuit power. You can learn these things in detail and you can learn low power VLSI design from this playlist. This playlist by Professor Indranil Sengupta, low power design playlist. And if you want to stand out in an interview, draw a clock gating circuit and then show them you understand how an AND works with enabled signal saves power. Explain the trade off you save power but you add a small delay. These kind of practical understanding impresses the interviewer. This brings us to the end of the video but there is still one major question that's in your mind. How long will this actually take? How long will it take to cover all of the things which I have mentioned? And let's be honest, right? Like, let's be honest practically. And there is some practical case. There is one ideal case. And some people who are working can spend only few, like one or two hours a day. People who are studying can spend up to four to five hours a day. And like considering all that, right? The honest answer to this is it will take minimum six months, right? Minimum six months, not less than that. And it can go up to any time, but I would say like on an average, it would take you from six to eight months to focus to, if you do focused and consistent work, not casual watching. It's not like you, when you are ca casually watching these videos or when you feel like I'll not study when I don't feel motivated. If you stick to discipline and study, it will take you six months and you can take a screenshot of this on like what, what you have to learn from month one to month of three, four and like how you can uh, parallelly take this along with you aptitude every day th through the throughout the six months in month one and two you can learn digital electronics and very log in month three and four you can learn cmos fundamental c programming and computer architecture but you have to keep practicing these stuff so that's why you are learning it earlier in month five and six you will learn specialization and build five to six solid projects and parallelly start applying for the roles right whatever roles you look you are looking for why i'm telling you is because you don't need to complete everything before you start applying after four after month four to five you can start applying one once you have two to three good projects and will you get rejected obviously yes but will you learn faster obviously yes because your first 10 interviews will teach you like uh, what things went wrong right you can make note of it work on it and bounce back to the net better next time. So you understand how these patterns of questions are happening in the interviews and you get used to it. And after that, you'll definitely crack it. Students who succeed aren't the one who wait to be perfect. They are the one who start, build, fail, again start, build, fail, and again start, keep trying. Your complete nine step VLSA roadmap is ready. If you feel this video helped you in any way, share it with your friends. If you want to save yourself months of searching and actually secure a position in this field, you need to master these seven steps, which I've told you. These, is, these are just like to your medium level. If you want like more basic, if you want more in-depth conceptual videos on VLSI, uh, let me know. I'll do a separate part two. Let me know in the comments. I'll based on the comments. I'll make a separate video for that as well. I do read all your comments and like, you know, thanks so much for the love. And if you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe to my channel. 
I'll meet you in the next one. Until then, keep building, keep shining, and stay strong.